All right, guys, we're going to take a look at Visitor. This is a brand that is instantly recognizable, both by their bold case shapes, their indices, and certainly their handsets. These are calligraphy-inspired handsets, and uh, they're just great-looking watches. Um, I think I've had the Dune Shore and maybe something else, but I know the Dune Shore was one of the models that I've had on the channel that was, like, so bold and unique that it was easily like a wild card type watch whereas this guy this is the linden definitely doesn't fill that wild card mark as much as like the dune shore it is unique and in, in, um, interesting as the case design is and the dial and hands and everything uh, it definitely is more normal ish you know what i mean um, so i think you could wear this as a regular everyday type watch depending on your uh, mood or desire, but this is definitely more in the sport watch category, I think. Um, and you could dress it up or dress it down, obviously. And uh, there's tons of options for straps, both from the brand or on your own, I'm sure, because it's a 20 mil. But let's get into the size, since we're talking about that. So I measure the case at 39.25 millimeters, 39 and a quarter mil. The lug to lug is a 48.25 mil. Thickness or rather thinness is only ten and a half and that's partly because they're using the um, uh, Miota 9015 and you have a 20 millimeter lug width here This one is paired with a really nicely done leather strap You can see they utilized curved spring bars to keep that symmetrical look throughout that opening and The straps also taper down to about 15 and a half millimeters. So really nice taper on those guys as well branded sewn in keeper and a floating keeper and then kind of matching hardware here to tie in also with the case shape so that pretty much covers all that stuff oh i forgot to mention the crown seven millimeter it's a non-screw down crown 50 meter water resist not a problem with this style of watch uh, but easy to operate at being a seven millimeter but also like kind of flat nice and tight tucked to the case so it's not obtrusive or anything like that plenty of traction on it this position here, of course, you're going to be able to wind, and it is signed, and I did rhyme. So you can see I brought back the Scrabble tiles. Um, I don't know why I just kind of stopped doing them. It was a little more time-consuming, but now that I just did them again for this one, I'll, I'll probably keep doing them for a little bit. It's kind of fun. So uh, you can see, again, the display case back. I forgot to share that with you a little bit. Um, you know, it's not like an insanely decorated movement, but they do have the custom visitor rotor so that's always fun to see a little bit of information on the back here visitor watch company you know you got some model info or model number information calligraphy calligra i can't even speak uh yeah that word and um in so and then he wrote indie dot anna so that's a little play on word phil the owner of Wiz visitor lives in indiana and i i overheard bruce uh well, not overheard watching bruce's video of this watch he talked to uh phil a little bit more and i think phil is hinting at maybe moving to utah so i don't know if uh the indiana case back ones could potentially end up being a little more um rare i guess you know because i don't know if he'll change that when he moves we'll see i'll talk to phil a little bit about that or maybe if phil watches this he can chime in so um, let's do a close-up on the dial. I'll do a wrist shot and then we'll do a loom shot because there's some trick loom on this. As you can see, it is a sandwich dial, but it's not a, you know, a bold in your face sandwich dial. The sandwich dial is done just to achieve basically the outer perimeter. Instead of doing printed hash marks on there, they're drilled out on the main dial to re reveal a BGW9 loomed plate underneath. And then you have oversized you know, brilliant, again, because it's BGW9, brilliant white filled um, indices there that are maxi oversized that kind of also tie in with the handset. And speaking of that handset, handset, wow, I can't speak today. Sorry, guys. The handset is just so unique and so cool, and I'm glad that he stuck with it on pretty much all of his models. I think that's the, the standard that he uses is that, uh, you know, wet ink style handset. So... Very cool. I'm personally not into, uh, you know, calligraphy or the wet ink or anything like that, but uh, it's still very cool and it uh, harkens to old times, you know, um, the way things used to be. So very cool. Black date wheel. Yeah, stuff. Well, it's hard to tell with all that dark blue, but 
but I think it's black with a white printed and then just visit around there and then you have the crosshairs, but pretty uh, simple dial and it leaves the rest of it open to what he's done here, which is just a beautiful looking watch. If in case you didn't see it, I was wearing my titanium G-Shock Square. I've been enjoying that immensely. So let me pop this guy in wrist real quick for you. It's always nice to have a taper, whether it's a bracelet or a strap or whatever. Now this strap's not broken in, so it's going to look a little weird on my wrist. But, you know, 39, you know, by basically 48 is, uh, you know, going to work for so many wrist sizes. It certainly works for my seven and a quarter wrist. And uh, it would certainly work on whatever, pretty much whatever wrist size you have. It, it'll definitely wear on a smaller wrist and it'll definitely wear on a little bit larger wrist. So no problem there. I love the K-shape. And then, you know, I didn't really point out, but the... The bezel, if you look the, the way the bezel is done, it's kind of submerged down into the case. You can see a reveal there on both sides, more so on the non-crown side. But you can see it's just kind of submerges itself down in there, adds a little more dimension. And then the nice curved lugs there are just, just great to look at. So let's pop the lights off, check out the loom before I fully um, lose the ability to speak. But you can see there, really nice, cool blue BGW9 loom. There's a lot of loom going on in the background, but you can also see visitor is loomed. Now to the naked eye, it's a little difficult to see that and the loomed date wheel. That is right. He has a loomed date wheel. Probably one of the first brands. I mean, I'm going back a ways back when I watched a video from KDP, I think it was. Um, he had a visitor and he pointed that out. I don't know if you're old school and you remember KDP, but um, he did a video on that. And I don't remember seeing any other watch brands doing the loom date wheel and um, he had already done it so and then of course you have all the reliefs going all the way around so very cool awesome looking watches price on these guys they range basically 580 590 right in there is what you're going to see new i'll put a link to the uh, website in the description but i think they pretty much sell out pretty much every time phil puts out a watch i mean you, you almost have to get on a list i think or something i'm not sure what format is using for trying to get these watches to to people but um, I know that can be difficult to you know find one to actually get one so if you're on the hunt for one it might be secondary market or get a hold of Phil you know follow, follow whatever instructions he has on his website and uh, get one if you're interested in it because they're well built very unique very cool very interesting potentially a talking piece amongst uh, fellow watch friends for sure all right guys I'll see you on the next vid